All right, everybody out there, this is 444RR, and in this video, I'm going to restart up my Teach a Trick series, in which I'm going to teach you how to do a simple magic trick in every video you can use to fool your friends and family. Now, this is I love performing this one, and it's great for anybody who goes to school, and I'll explain why in a minute. Now, I have a chalkboard behind me, but you can use a whiteboard if your school has, because most schools don't have chalkboards anymore. Now, they've gone to dry erase whiteboards. But I'm going to actually give these cards just a little bit of a shuffle here. So we're going to shuffle up the cards. And if you don't know how to shuffle, you don't have to do this advance of a shuffle. So let's have your spectator pick the top card off the deck. So this is going to be their card. All right. And we'll put it back in the middle. So we're just going to give the deck a few cuts. Now I'm going to take these cards and I'm going to spring them against the chalkboard. I'll show you what I mean. Spring them is where cards just kind of come off. Uh, it makes a mess and it's really cool. Ready? One, two, three. Whoa, we got one card stuck to the chalkboard. One card right here. I'm going to pull it off the chalkboard. If I can get it off, there we go. And it is the Two of Diamonds. Was that your card, the Two of Diamonds? All right. This is a really great effect. It's a messy effect, as you can see, because all the cards kind of go everywhere. But let me tell you how the trick is done. And it's a great one because you can do it in a classroom. If your teacher has like a lot of time at the end of the day and you, she lets you do a trick, do this one. So here's how this works. Now, um, the card was stuck to the chalkboard, as you can tell. And all I did was I took a little bit. Let me get it right over here. I have my material. Took a little bit of tape, okay, and I made a little ring out of the tape, which is, of course, where you fold it over and make it uh, sticky. Make that little ring, you know how to make a tape ring, and put put it right on the back of the card. Or you, if your if your classroom has double sided tape where it's sticky on both sides, you could use that too. And I stuck the card and I just plopped it against the chalkboard. Now don't plop it so it's like this, or so it's like this. Plop it so it's kind of at an angle like that. Now if you noticed, I was standing in front of the chalkboard, kind of weird. I was standing at it like this. So uh, you didn't see the whole chalkboard, because if you were to see the whole chalkboard, you'd notice that there's a card there. So when you do this trick, after you've placed a card on the chalkboard, you want to stand in front of it like this, so they cannot see the card behind it. So if your audience is this way, then you want to stand uh, this way. So you're blocking the audience's view this way. If your audience is right in front of you like, like the camera is to me, you want to stand just like this, so you block the entire chalkboard. Now. Uh, there's also another thing you can do too. This looks kind of weird when a card kind of just sticks to the chalkboard because it's like, well, how would a card stick? So what I do sometimes is I take a card and I tuck it underneath the chalkboard like this up here in the corner. So I kind of tuck it under there like that. And see how it kind of just sits there? It's very hard to see. I'll bring the chalkboard a little closer. Whoops, well, maybe I can't. But it just tucks in the corner there. You can see it up there in the corner, kind of just tucks in there. And the whiteboards, usually whiteboards have that metal edge around them, so you can put the card under that metal edge and stand in front of it like this. Now with my chalkboard, the reason why I put a, I taped the card up here is because when I sprung the cards against the chalkboard, it would knock, well, yeah, it would knock the card off the corner. And I did a, a two takes of this where the card fell off when the cards got sprung. So, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to teach you, uh, now you know the basics of this. You need a duplicate card. So, whatever card you want your spectator to choose, that's the duplicate card they're going to need. You're going to need for your deck. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to place the, the, the card that matches this from your deck of cards right on top. So, your two of diamonds goes right on top. Or whatever card you want it to be. Um, I have a two of diamonds because I got a lot of these lying around. Uh, but you can use anything you want. If you want, you can use a joker. You could use both jokers. Well, you can't use both jokers because they're both different. But you could use jokers because you know you a lot of, sometimes people have a lot of jokers around the house. Okay, so how this works is I did a shuffle where it's a uh, this is a kind of a more advanced shuffle. People don't sometimes don't shuffle like this, but to shuffle this is called a riffle shuffle. So you take one half of the cards. Now remember, your two of diamonds on top of this pile. So the other pile, start thumbing a few cards off, just with your thumb, thumb a few cards off, and then start thumbing a few cards off this pile from the bottom, and keep alternating cards until the pile is exhausted. Now you want to make sure that at the end of your riffle shuffle, 
This card remains on top. That's the whole secret to the trick. This card remains on top. Now, there's other ways of shuffling the cards, too. You could do what most people do is they do this. And that works. Because what you would do in that situation to, mess, to mix up the cards is you would have your two of diamonds on bottom. And you would, this is from the magician's exposed angle. You would take your thumb, thumb down one card, and then thumb down another, and just keep thumbing cards down. And you can actually grab more than one card at a time. Notice how clumps are falling. And what that does is bring the two of diamonds right on top. So that's pretty simple, too. You can, uh, you can do that. So I'll go over that again, put it on the bottom, and just take your thumb, thumb one card down. Then you can thumb as many as you want or as little as you want, whatever you want to do. And that leaves the two of diamonds right on top. Then you have your spectator pick the top card. So you say to whoever you're doing the trick for, of course, this trick you can do to, like, a lot of people. So you would just be like, all right, so go ahead and uh, would you help me? All right, just... Take the top card. They take the top card thinking they've got a completely free choice because they think, oh, well, he shuffled the cards. There's no way it can be set up. So he takes the top card and tell him to show it around to everybody, too. So the entire audience, so your entire audience will see it. Tell him to put it. Uh, then you cut a little bit of the cards off just by taking a little clump like this. Have him put the card in the middle of the deck. I don't want to lose this card, so we're going to place it over there. Place it in the middle of the deck. And then just take a few clumps and put them to the bottom. That's cutting the cards. So you're going to have them cut the cards so that they think the card is completely lost in the deck. Now, you're then going to reveal the card on the chalkboard by springing the cards. Now, springing is tough. And one other tip, too. Do not move around too much. You don't want to do this when you're performing this trick because you don't want people to see that card. Stand perfectly still and try to keep the card blocked. And you have the spectator do all the stuff. So you say... You choose the top card, and you shuffle it like this. Stand, Don't stand stiff, but don't be, you know, loose around and kind of, don't do that. All right, so now it's time to reveal a card. How you do that is by springing cards. Springing cards works like this. You take the cards, you push your thumb on top, you place three fingers down here, and your pointer finger goes on the back of the deck. You, you bellow the deck like this. Notice that my finger is curving the deck, okay? So your, fingers cur you, your finger pushes the cards forward and that will curve the deck. And as you do that, you take your thumb and you release the top of the deck and that's going to make cards start springing off. Now, it looks complicated, but when you actually go and try it, it's pretty easy. So to spring cards, you just do this. And it will start to spring. Uh, this is kind of a new deck. Oh, and by the way, springing cards is a lot easier with an old deck. A new deck, they don't really spring as well. So that's how to spring cards. If you don't think, if you if you try springing cards a few times and they're just not springing right for you, what I also do is I take the deck and I just kind of fan them out in my hands like this, and I take this fan and I throw it. So. Um, or if you want to take the packet, you can just have it like this in a square, take the packet and throw it at the chalkboard. I like the springing of the cards or just uh, pushing the cards over in your hands like this and tossing it. Because What that does is it does what we call in magic misdirection. And misdirection is where your audience is looking somewhere else when the magic's happening. So in the moment when you throw the cards against the chalkboard, it makes that kind of, it kind of makes a noise and your eyes blink for a minute and they don't notice that there's a card there. So when the cards are going towards it, that kind of blocks their view of the deck or of the chalkboard for just a second. This noise, when they hit them, makes them blink and then they think, whoa, that card just stuck there. So, and also it looks cool when it's messy like this. That's why I like to take the cards and fan them out and throw them or spring the cards at the deck and throw them because it makes a mess and it's really fun to have a big mess on your, uh, when you're performing. So that is the card on chalkboard. It's a really great effect. Uh, I recommend this. Now, again, I don't recommend using tape. It's just because my chalkboard doesn't have those edges. So just look at your chalkboard or whiteboard. If it doesn't have those really deep edges where you can't slide a card in there, then you can tape it up to the white or whiteboard or chalkboard. But I don't think it looks as good when the card just kind of floats there because it's like, well, wait a minute. How's that card attached to that chalkboard? These cards don't have glue on them. So it's, 
But anyways, so it's a great it's a great effect to perform. And once you have the spectator choose the card, the rest is all acting. You just want to have you just want to be acted up really big. And you want to be like, oh oh, I'm gonna try to find your card in a magical way. And you do the action against the chalkboard. And it makes it really really cool. So this is the card against chalkboard teacher trick. It's a really amazing trick. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you for the next teacher trick right here on my channel.